Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Are you ready? Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Rabino. And this DJ Erm in the building. And you listen to the Up and Up podcast. Yeah. Wait, what are we doing? I don't know, just listen. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What it do, what it do. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuning to the Up and Up podcast. I'm your host, Rabino. And I'm DJ Erm, man. What's going on, boss? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Feeling good, feeling great. It's yes, Friday. Sir. Say that. TGIF. Feeling blessed, man, you know? Got some good energy in the room. Got some, got, got some of the homies in here mm-hmm. from the down under. Yeah. <laughs> Australia. Shout them out. Shout out my guys, EO, Adam, A-Dub in the building. Yes, sir. For those of you first time tuning in, this is the Up and Up Podcast. I, I should have said that first, right? Yeah. For the first time, tune, uh, first time um, listeners, this is the Up and Up Podcast. This is the podcast where we're focused on cultivating culture, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing more than that. Uh, we're doing that by providing amazing stories of individuals, groups, movements, right? Marathon runners. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pushers, shakers. Yes, sir. I keep going. Yeah. <laughs> All that. I know. Uh, just car- <laughs> but carving a lane, man, out here trying to really pave paths uh, for themselves as well as people coming from uh, coming behind. Um, for those of you uh, consistent listeners out there, man, the supporters, we want to say thank you. Uh, you know, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys for the support and the encouragement you guys are giving, not just to us, but also all these amazing guests that we have on this show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and all the great work that we're doing through this platform. So shout out to y'all. If you want to continue supporting the podcast, you know what to do. Make sure to rate, review, subscribe. You like it and too. like it too. You yeah. can find all the episodes on YouTube, <laughs> SoundCloud, and iTunes. Just type in the Up and Up Podcast, and that's where you can find it. Also, please make sure to follow us on all social media platforms at underscore the Up and Up. A lot of great things coming for 2019, yep. right? Lot. We working, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't stop. <laughs> I'm excited. Don't, don't use my quote. Don't use my Diddy quote. Can't stop, won't stop. All right. All right um, also, please make sure to follow us at underscore up and up clothing.com. Up and up clothing.com is live. Um, while we're on the topic of the store, we are still in the process of doing the enter to draw to win two free tickets to go see Nas. Nas, man. AZ. AZ. The Lupe Fiasco. And Lupe. Yes, that's August 17th at the Showware Center in Kent. So make sure to, uh, if you made a purchase between May 13th, which was our launch date, up until July 31st, you'll be entered for a draw, a uh, chance to win tickets, right? Yeah. So go ahead and check that out. Um, anything else? Anything else on the list? Let's get to it. You sure? Yes, sir. Nothing? You want to get it out? <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's get to it, man. Um, for those of you first-time listeners, this is how it goes, man. We uh, This show is about providing context to the grind, right? Yes, uh, sir. Actually, I should say context to the shine, right? That's really what it's about. Mm-hmm. Um, we're here to uh, tell amazing stories of people who are, again, like I said, paving waves and paving paths. Um, today's guest, I would say, is a man who's, who's putting forth a demonstration that many athletes and young men uh, can learn from in terms of trying to get theirs, right? Um, I would say he's a young hustler who's keeping everything he's doing on the up and up, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, otherwise, the brother would not be with us in the e- this evening, right, mm-hmm. in the building. Um, to kind of give you a little bit of insight, his demonstration is re- honestly taking place currently in the sport of basketball um, and as a professional. Uh, he's currently playing with the Los Angeles Clippers um, and, and, and really, really trying to carve a lane and represent a city that is full of basketball uh, stars and legends, I would say. Um, he's a former point guard as well for the St. Louis University. Uh, Billikens, did I, did I pronounce that right? Yeah, Billikens? It, okay, it. cool, cool. What is a Billikens, by the way? It's a uh, Greek mythology. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> mythology <laughs> creeper. Uh, creature. Uh, yeah, man, uh, St. Louis University Billikens, uh, who actually most recently was uh, in, the, in the big dance, the mm-hmm. March Madness tournament, uh, yes, doing sir. their thing. Um, and above all, man, I, I kind of saved this for last. He's a hometown, hometown uh, product, hometown, hometown hero, man, hometown kid uh, out here from the city of Seattle, representing his city and you yes, know sir. proudly cultivating culture in his own unique way. Uh, I would say, I would say it's time to introduce the people to who, who we got, man. Yeah. <laughs> None other than the ultimate hustler and marathon runner himself, Tremaine Isabel Jr. Can we get a round of applause for my brother? Yeah. What's good? What's good? What's good? How you guys doing? How you doing, straight, boss? Man. Straight, straight. You good? I'm great. Thank you for coming, man. Yeah. Appreciate appreciate you uh, for stopping by. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the show. Uh, we usually start off with the quote of the day. Okay. Right? Something just kind of get the mind. Calm down. We're going to get to you. All right? I'm going to explain. <laughs> <Friday, laughs> <move. laughs> you know, usually when I say that, you be looking over here like, what's up, man? Uh, but it's really just something to kind of set the tone of the conversation. Right? Um, so, quote, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go All right, man. Take us so away, man. Quote of the day is success is a journey, not a destination. 
the doing mm. is often more important than the outcome. Mm. And who said that? Arthur Ashe. Mm. Arthur Ashe is a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Where do you find these quotes, man? man don't even Google. Worry about it, man. Come on, man. Who the plug? <laughs> Who the plug? Um, yeah, go ahead and run that back, though, man, for the yeah. people in the back. All right, that so was snoozing. Su- success is a journey, not a destination. The doing is often more important than the outcome. Mm. Yeah. I love that, man. I love. I think. I, I think. Um, and I mean, the quote obviously is a, it's a powerful quote, right? Mm-hmm. But we bring in the quotes, obviously, that tie into our guest story um, and their demonstration of what they're doing. Um, and what we, like I said, what we do here is really pull the curtain back, right? And, and then kind of take things from where it began, not just where it is right now, right? Um, and so for you, uh, Tremaine, I would say uh, tell the people a little bit about where you grew up. Uh, you grew up out here in Seattle, obviously, but what was it like growing up out here and kind of what types of things kind of shaped your outlook for life moving forward? Man, that's a, that's a big question. It's a loaded question. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you <laughs> want me to answer that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, your way, so, so uh, I'm from the Central District, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Entire family's from the Central District. Uh, you know, my dad and my mom broke from there. Uh, I grew up, I went to Washington Middle School. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to, uh, you know, Stevens Elementary. I went to Thurgood Marshall. I went to Leshaw. Mm, <laughs> you know, I'm all throughout the CD. Yeah, you know, yeah. nah, for real. Uh, you know, uh, I grew up, you know, with uh, two hustlers as my parents, mm. you know. Who also yeah. lived by that mm-hmm. that that uh, quote of the day? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my mom, a single mom of three. You know, she, you know, was a uh, she. She drove a bus for 13 years, and now she's like, uh, you know, she's a, a supervisor for Metro now. So she, you know, mm. on the up and up. Hell you feel yeah. me? She also she's also does real estate. Mm. You know, so she's uh, you know, she's always trying to pave a way for herself and her kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad, you know, he. Uh, also from the Central District, he, uh, you know, uh, didn't uh, take the, take the route that I, that I took with sports and you know education. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, you know, he learned the hard. He 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 took a lot of bump his bumps and bruises. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. He was a a, a a rap artist. You know, he uh, also you know he just you know living fast. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, He's on the up and up, you know. He's got a full time job, you yeah. know. He takes care of his kids now, yeah. You know, and it's just crazy to see like everyone on the up and up. Yeah, you man. Know it's, like I mean? a ba- it's like a balance, though. You yeah. know, nah, exactly. Kind of get that balance, right? So like, yeah. So like, growing up, you know, it was crazy. It was like I didn't know what to look up to. You know, I was I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I knew I loved basketball. I knew I loved sports, but. I couldn't see it, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have no family members really hooping. I had an auntie that went and played D one basketball, but yeah, you know, I didn't have no, 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 no uh, examples. Yeah, the examples that I had was, yeah. uh, you know, people that were close to you, dudes yeah. doing the wrong things, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So it could have been easy for me to take that route, and my mom seen it creeping on, creeping up on me. So uh, I ended up going to high school at this school. Actually, I, I went. Eighth grade, the eighth grade uh, at this school called Lakeside, so you okay. know, pri- private school. Yeah, yeah out I'm familiar, North, I'm familiar. So I went out there, and uh, my mom wanted to get me away from you know distractions. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only that, but uh, she thought it would be a good opportunity uh, educationally, just to uh, expand my, my my mind and you know the things that uh, I wouldn't have been introduced to mm-hmm. if I just you exposure. Know, expo- exactly. Yeah, exposure is big. Oh, huge. Yeah, especially, like, uh, we were talking about Cliff, Cliff Averill, when we had him on the show, and mm-hmm. I was like, the first thing he mentioned was, that's my goal right now is to expose kids to just different things that they normally wouldn't be exposed to. Man. So that's big. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, I mean, that, I could go on forever about that, but that in itself, uh, the mom making that decision sent me there, just opened my eyes to just so much. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, one was, you know, that, you know, you don't have to play a sport to, you know, be something in this world, yeah, right? Like, be successful. That's I feel like that's what we get so growing up, like in that, like the what we do is like it's either basketball or it's be a football rapper. or be yeah. a rapper, yeah. or mm-hmm. an entertainer, right? Yeah. Like, you got to be an entertainer. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's like that's how we gonna make it out. But when I went to Lakeside, I was like, I'm asking people if they're going to the game tonight. Like I got a game tonight. You guys coming? You guys coming? They're like I don't care about basketball. <laughs> <laughs> like, my dad's trying to find a cure to cancer. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, what are you talking? <laughs> That's a trip, though. No, it was crazy. It was just like, it was the first time where I was like, damn, like. There's more. There's more. There's There's definitely more. There's there's more to it. So, uh, 
not only that, but uh, I feel like that, 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 like what I just said, also plays into like me being like comfortable with who I am. Mm-hmm. So I feel like some people, uh, I am a basketball player, and some people like think that's like the end all be all. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if they reach a certain pinnacle or status, it's like, boom, like I made it, right? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. like there's no, but nothing nobody could tell me. There's you know, like I'm it, and like. You're not, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and uh, you just got to keep on being on the up and up at all times. Hell yeah. No, that's real, you. man. So who were like, uh, like when you think of basketball, who was like your, the people you look, you looked up to in the game of basketball, like whether you had like favorite athletes or any type of athlete? Man, when I was, when I was a kid, I was looking up to Vinoy Overton. Mm-hmm. I was looking up to Peyton Siva. Mm-hmm. I was looking up to LC. Mm-hmm. I was looking up to Tony Roten. I was looking up to, I mean, those are like the ones that were close to me, like yeah. in the same city and yeah. in the same environment as me. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, from afar, I'm looking up to Brandon Roy, Jamar Crawford, Nate Robinsons. You know, mm. those are like the fairy tales. You know, yeah. right? Yeah. And then uh, when I get into like eighth grade, seventh grade, ninth grade, maybe like ninth grade, I start making connections with Jamal Crawford, Brandon Roy, you know, Martel Webster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like. Like this is like a reality. Like, you can yeah. really, like, you can really yeah. do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> like that. No, that's real though. Cause that was. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because I think people don't really understand what what it is when it comes to basketball in Seattle, right? Like mm-hmm. I think the world, right? Everybody outside of Seattle, um, like I think that does have an impact on your vision. Yeah. Like seeing enough people come out your city. Like you think of like hip hop with New York. Yeah. Everybody came out of New York, right? At the time. At the time. So like everybody thought it was possible. You mm-hmm. feel me? As opposed to like someone who lived in like Rhode Island or some shit, you know, yeah. like, and nobody came out of my city. So, um, like you said, it, it made it more tense. Shout out Rhode Island. Somebody maybe came out of there. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. No, we don't know. We gotta do the research. It's, 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 it's the SoundCloud era, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Rhode Island, man. This was not a shot at you. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, uh, it, it definitely, I sound, it sounded like it impacted your vision, right? Yeah, fact. At that point, when you started seeing everybody, like, even if they didn't really make it, you just knew they got there. Mm-hmm. They got to the league, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And then some of them just went above and beyond when they got there, obviously, right? Facts. Um, but yeah, so you, so what was that like reaching out to some of those players? Uh, well, first of all, I mean. Or did they it, reach it, out to you? It, it, it was like, uh, so, so another step is like, when I went to this uh, school, like, I found, like, like a huge, like, uh, you know, person in my life, which is my mentor, right? Mm. And my mentor was also mentors to a couple of these basketball players, mm. uh, as in, you know, Brandon Roy and Martel Webster. And uh, he, he basically, uh, you know, utilized, you know, himself and told them, like, you know, there's a, like there's a kid in the same city who mm-hmm. grew up with like the same, pretty much situation as you guys that mm-hmm. you guys might want to like look into like, like forget basketball like yeah this kid like has a chance to just you know he's a good person yeah you know yeah just like you guys were you yeah know? Uh, a lot of people don't know but like Brandon Roy like he almost didn't even play college basketball you know like he 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 couldn't really like he had SAT problems he had all these mm. issues <laughs> mm. you know that were kind of out of his control like you mm-hmm. you don't really know until you get to that 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 senior year like all right bet now what like i'm yeah. all american i got this then i got sat <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like that one thing like, holding <laughs> you back nobody like everybody thinks you're you're a sure yeah. thing like it's, it's it's gonna happen yeah so uh my mentor basically uh back when brandon was in high school you know got him a job mm. he's working uh i want to say like the railroad or like something like something real rural, like mm. you know something crazy labor yeah something like, real hard you know yeah. how to but uh, he was doing like you know crazy hours of tutoring, you know, mm. you know like, uh, you know, same thing with Martel. I mean, pretty much like my mentor is basically a guy that like if he sees a kid, you know, in a situation and he feels like he has a you know uh, the ability to be like something, whether it's basketball or just like a decent human being, you mm. know, like he's gonna help you out. So then Martel and Brandon, you know, just so happen to do what they did. They learned that from him, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, they was like, you know, they already know who I am because, yeah. you know, my dad, you know, my mom. So it just made it so much easier. Mm. But, uh, you know, Brandon, Martel, like, you know, Jamal, like, they just con- they were constantly on me, giving me pointers, you know, uh, on, like, what to look out with, with, with recruiting, you know, think how to work out. Uh, they come back from NBA 
uh, seasons in the summer, and like I would be working out with them, mm. you know, like not working out with guys in my grade or like you know going to all these parties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it was like I I knew what it took like yeah. as a as a as a ninth tenth. That's grader. crazy because yeah, I think uh. I w- I was always curious, like you you obviously growing up playing basketball and taking it as serious as you did um, when you were coming up. Um, I think a lot of people also don't realize that it's a lot about who you know, right? Oh, yeah. Sometimes not just how good you are. It's kind of like a uh, Jada Kids had that line. He's like, um, he's like, why is that brother? Why is there a brother up north better than Jordan that didn't get that break? Remember Fact. that line? Oh, yeah, it's like. Yeah. There's people out there who probably had the talent, but they just didn't have access to certain people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that for those who may be struggling um, with maybe the fact knowing that they're talented but just can't really get access? How would you say they should go about networking or meeting that coach or meeting that AAU coach or whoever can kind of plug them in? Uh, two ways, two things. Uh, I feel like it goes hand in hand. I feel like you could create your own situation where the – or the or the uh the politics, if you want, are mm-hmm. are on your side, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like I was feeling that same way when I was in eighth grade, figuring out a high school to go to. Mm-hmm. Like, I played with kids, you know, guys like my best friends still to this day. You <laughs> know, like we'll joke around and stuff, but like, I didn't think they were better than me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, we were in eighth grade, but you know, their dad's friends with the high school coach at Garfield or the high yeah. school coach at Franklin. You know, so they're getting that nod, right? So I was always like second tier. So I said, you know, bump like, you know, I'm gonna go to Lakeside. And I'm gonna create my own thing, you know, yeah, right? You know, yeah, like yeah. so where no one's like putting me up against like, you know, my best friend who's, you know, dad is, yeah. you know, best friends with, yeah. with the high school coach. So it's like a clean slate. It's like a clean slate, you yeah. know. So sometimes don't be scared to remove yourself. Like I feel like people be scared. I feel like it's the same thing like when like rappers go back to the AOC. Sometimes you got to just remove yourself, like, for a certain yeah. amount of time, right? Yeah. And then, like, almost reinvent yourself. Yeah. And then come back, and then, you know, people will be able to see it for what it really was. Yeah, like running with the pack. Yeah. Kind of like, I mean, we talk a lot about Nipsey on this show, and I think that's kind of, like, I look at that double XL cover, like, 2010. Mm-hmm. And everybody he was in that cover with essentially just went commercial, like, popping, right? Mm-hmm. Not to say they're, like, sellouts or anything, but, like, they just were popping commercially, and he kind of was like, I'm going to do my thing. Mm-hmm. And um, that's important, man, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's real. And uh, also uh, to that is uh, obviously I feel like we've, we've all heard uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, when it comes to making connections, uh, don't be don't be shy and don't, like, be confident in who you are. I feel like that's the I feel like that's the main thing that attracted us to Nipsey Hussle. Facts. It's like – he wasn't scared to be like, I'm from neighborhood. I'm a crip. You know, I didn't go. To, I didn't reach this level of education, but I taught myself. Mm. I didn't do this, but I did that. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. and I feel like if you're like if you're yourself and you're genuine, people can't do nothing but respect that. That's facts. And when I was at Lakeside and I'm shaking hands with billionaires and billionaires' kids, mm-hmm. yeah. it's like they know I don't come from nothing, right? Mm-hmm. So like they could easily be like, you know, like. Who, who is this kid? Yeah. Right? But they know that I'm man. Like, I'm always going to be the same. Yeah. I'm not, like, just smiling in your face because I, maybe I want something. Or it's yeah. like, I really want to know who you are. Like Consistent. Yeah, always. Yeah. 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 So how, how was, how was, because uh, you did bring up, like, uh, recruiting and stuff like that. So how was that process like for you? Like, when you were transitioning from, like, getting out of high school to, you know, getting ready for the next level in college. And it was hectic. It was, yeah. hectic. It was hectic for me, not necessarily because I was the most heavily recruited player, mm-hmm. because I wasn't. You know, I was recruited well, but, you know, there's top five guys, you know, five-star guys. But yeah. it was hectic for me because I didn't have the, – the people that I had that had done it were, you know – Martel went to the pros out of high school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brandon was a top six pick, top five pick, you know, like yeah. – I wasn't that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, what they knew and what I knew was totally different, right? Yeah. And it's and it's a different, uh, you know, era also. Yeah. But I didn't have a cousin. My I didn't have a uh, a brother. You know, I'm mm-hmm. the oldest mm-hmm. of all my siblings. Mm-hmm. I didn't have, uh, you know, my mom didn't go to college. My dad didn't go to college. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. it was like I was managing it pretty much by myself yeah. almost. You know, obviously I, you know. Tell my dad, tell my mom, tell my aunt, you know, tell yeah. people, oh, this this school called, this school called. But yeah. that wasn't a way, like, 
they I knew more than them when it came to like what it took to pick a yeah. school. And you and you ultimately had to make that decision. Yeah. Right? No one can and make the, it for you too. Exactly. So yeah. uh the funny thing is is uh my I, my sophomore year, like this is how this is how small minded, you know, it's not small minded, I don't want to say small minded, but it's like this is how I was thinking, is like my first offer came from Seattle University. Uh, like I think freshman year, Kevin Dollar called me and gave me an f- offer. And then sophomore year of high school, I got a before sophomore year of high school, I got an offer from Washington State. When they called me, they told me uh, they wanted me to uh, like this is years from now. I'm a sophomore in high school. They said after your, we want you to do five years of high school. We want, we want you to go to a prep school, and we'll give you a scholarship now. Like we want you to do mm. a, a five years of high school and then come the following year. And I said, bet, like, all right, like, you know, yeah. I made it to Washington State. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. Division One. Yeah, and you're, pack, so, you're a pack, sophomore, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah I'm like, pack 10? Hell yeah. Um, Sign me up or whatever. Yeah, what I got to do? Let's go. It's good. Yeah, I'm, it. I'm a yeah. cougar. Yeah. Yeah. I start, this is like before my, you know, this is the beginning. So, like, sophomore year, I do well. Junior year, I go to state. Senior year, I, I win state at Garfield. And it's like, boom, uh, my coach gets fired at Wazoo. So now I open up my recruitment. And uh, I'm I'm about to just re- re- recommit to Washington State. They just got Ernie Kent. Um, he comes up to Garfield. We meet with him. I'm just like, you know, obviously I've been committed to you guys for three years. I'm uh, I'm with it. Like, let's just do it. Yeah. So I recommit, and then two days later, I'm like, honestly, let me just see what happens. I'm, I open up my my uh, my recruitment. University of Missouri calls. You know, Arizona, Arizona, State, like all these USC's, like yeah. Providence schools. I never. That Imagine, knew, yeah, we're like, looking. knew about me. Yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah. like, I was like, damn. Like, that's crazy. Man, that's crazy. Especially, like, like, those ones that are, like, Far East Coast and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, uh, I ended up t- taking all these calls, whatever, and then uh, I-, I-, I get it down to Providence, Mizzou, and there's one more. And there's one more. I can't remember. I had three. And uh, Mizzou really wanted to take my first visit. Like, they had a, 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 a an assistant coach that was like uh, a bulldog when it came to recruit. He's calling me. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you got people understand recruit. Like, yeah, break like, it down for those who don't so know. Like, it's like it's, it's imagine just like a girlfriend. A, nah, for real. Like you just got however many schools you got. Like I, I don't know what you guys believe. I I only got one. If I got a girl, I only got one girl. But you know, <laughs> for the record, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> but like imagine you just got twenty like twenty schools. Those are twenty girls that just like really want your attention. Mm. Like. Mm. Literally calling me like, hey, I'm just thinking about you. Like, I just saw this dude shoot this three. He looked just like you. I swear. To, that's literally, like, what it is. Like, he'd be like, he'd be like, hey, Tremaine, like, I'm just thinking about I'm just eating lunch. Like, you know how, you know, we could win a national championship. Uh, all right, coach. Yeah, Next crazy. coach. Uh, what number you want to wear? Because I think you, you might look good in that number four, boy. You might look good. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> it's like, that's crazy. It's like tedious. It's just like. That reminds just me just of like, uh, uh, He Got Game. Nah, with, uh, exactly. Jesus exactly. Shuttles. Exactly. They was coming at him all types well, of shit. Yeah, nah, that's nah real. for real. That's exactly, that's exactly how it is. But uh, you know, you're 18. You know, you're not really. It's really just blowing smoke. You know, yeah. and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose what's real. You gotta really. How you do know. you know though? How can you tell when everybody's saying the same shit? <laughs> and that's, I know? think that's the I think that's the crazy thing about college sports is uh, because uh, I think that's the hardest thing in the world. And I, me and uh, Zach Levine's dad. Paul, like I'm real close to Zach. We grew up together. Me and his dad was just talking about this a couple weeks ago, and picking the right school is is literally the hardest thing in the world because there's no guidelines on what they can say to you. Mm, yeah. <laughs> they can tell you anything. Oh yeah. Like look in your eyes, and be like, you're you're gonna be a first uh t- you're gonna be a t- uh, first round draft pick, top five. Yeah. Uh, the ball's gonna be in your hands. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're gonna play the whole game. Yeah. You're starting. Matter of fact. We're gonna put a billboard of you up right in front of the, yeah. right in right in front of the arena too. Yeah. You get there, no minutes. Matter of fact, red shirt. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. So now, so now you like you you looking around for answers. You far away from home. It's like, it's it's, it's cold. Like NCAA. Yeah. So this is in Missouri. Yeah. No, I didn't have to do that. But I'm okay, saying okay. people people have had to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with me, I mean to be completely honest, uh, we made Mizzou my first visit. Okay. Uh, and just me and my mom went, and uh, mind you, I'm from Seattle, right? You know, our biggest school is Washington University, of Washington. That's all I've ever seen, right? Mm-hmm. And to be honest, like I didn't even go to Greek Row, like you know, I'm just going to the basketball games. I'm just seeing the football arena, like I ain't going like going around campus. Uh, we go to Mizzou, and my eyes just lit up, like it's SEC, SEC, like yep. it's crazy, like it's a, it's a, it's almost like Wazoo, but yeah, bigger, more people. And like, 
uh, like way newer. It just felt know? like a college town. Oh no, it yeah. felt like it was at a movie. Yeah. You know? So like, that's real. I, I I enjoyed my visit, and I and then they they told me like you know, obviously there was, there was like uh, you got a starting spot. You know, you're gonna be starting playing 35 minutes, whatever, whatever, and uh, and uh, this offer. If you if you go to another visit, we're taking an offer off the table. So I was like, I enjoyed my visit. I loved it. I was like, bet let's do it. Mm -hmm. I sign. Two weeks later, they signed, like, a fifth-year point guard, right? So, like, how – Played the same position as you. Same posi – so, basically, what I yeah. just did at St. Louis is, like, if you do – if you graduate in four years and you, and you only play three, you can get another year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. So, they That's signed – so, I was – Grad eight, transfer? Yeah, grad transfer. Okay. So, I was 18 going into Mizzou. They signed a 24-year-old kid in the same grade as me. Mm. So, he was the starting point guard. You know? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like, two weeks later. So, I was Who's like – this guy? Exactly. <laughs> so, you know – that's crazy. From a from a, uh, it's almost like a, you got you got to be real strong. Like if you go, if you if you like for any kid about to go play college basketball, college football, like you got to just be ready for whatever, and you always got to stay confident. You know, because mm. it's so easy to lose confidence, not necessarily just because they might sign over you or do something like that. Not even that he signed over me. You know, like yeah. like they just might you know lie to you or yeah. you know you got to just stick to like what even puts you. Like in that position, yeah, well, you can control. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Because I think that's the biggest thing. You walk into certain situations. I think it's not just for sports. Even in business, whether mm -hmm. you're going into a career, or you walk into a corporate company, they got a plan. Yeah. And sometimes they ain't gonna tell you that plan. Fact. Sometimes you ain't even in that plan. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But they'll make it seem as though you are until they, you know. So. Uh, but I feel like sometimes yeah. with with business, at least you could have some paperwork, that's or true. you could have some, uh, you know. Yeah. Facebook. At the end of, the, I gave you the idea. I'm a sue. You know. Yeah, there's yeah. a little. Protection. I can't be like. Coach lied to me. Like, yeah. you know, like, you he told me I was going to start, y'all. He, exactly. he told me I was going to start, so I, well, I got to start. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that's why I feel like sports is just so, like, it's just janky. Like, it's yeah. really like a – you got to know somebody. That's another yeah. thing. Like, if you – like, there's dudes – dads was getting coaching jobs now. It's like, hold on. Like, you know? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, I don't, got, I don't got that. I don't got that, you know? Yeah. Like, so, so let's – take us through kind of um, that, that, ops, that adjustment of going from Lakeside – um, and then, you know, playing in Seattle, being, you know, um, regarded as one of the best coming out the city mm -hmm. at the time, to going to a university, then kind of having to start over again, yeah. right? Build that rep back up, mm -hmm. especially in a different city, right? Yeah. Um, what was that like? So, it was it, it was a crazy experience. It was an amazing experience. Uh, I, would not, I wouldn't give it up. Like, the two years at Mizzou was, like, crazy mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. One, because, like... I just I met so many people that like I'm still friends with to this day, and I haven't seen them since I left Missouri. That's what's crazy. Like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen them in what three, four years, but like we still keep in touch. Like, That's big. Um, and I feel like being from Seattle put me in like the perfect uh, space to uh, navigate Mizzou at that time because like being from Seattle, like you you, you grow with so many different people. You know, like you yeah. grow with you know. Don't matter skin color, white, black, African, mm -hmm. Asian, Indian, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that's just normal, you know. Mm -hmm. So you're not you. I don't even. I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. Right? I get to Mizzou and it's like a hotbed for like you know. We had like a race war on my mm -hmm. campus, right? Wow. <laughs> like, we yeah. uh, you guys, I don't know if you guys remember, but like uh, like the football team. So we had a a guy, we had a guy on our campus who was part of a black fraternity, and he decided to go on a uh like a hunger strike. Like he wasn't going to eat until the president resigned, because yeah. there were so many. Uh, there was just a crazy amount of uh, situations that happened on our campus that were reported and being and like, swept under the rug. And being swept under the rug. Yeah. And he, you know, took a stand, you know, and said, "I'm not going to eat nothing like until he's gone." Mm. Right. Spike Lee came to our campus. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Like, wow. The, KKK was going on. Like, shit was wild. Wow. Like, yeah. shit was wild. Shit was wild. Yeah, yeah. That, see, but that's the ESPN was on. Like, it was everywhere. It was national news. Yeah. And uh, me from Seattle, I never seen nothing like it. Yeah. Seattle, I'm like, Seattle's I'm very, like, bro, uh, what the very yeah. uh, you know, uh, progressive. Yeah, liberal, liberal show, you know. Like, everything's cool out here. And that was the weird thing, too. It was like, I had just like, like, I was just blind. To, I was just blind to everything. So I was already, like, I had already made connections with everybody on the campus. Like, I was the kid, like, I was the dude, like, I was cool with damn near all the fraternity, like frats. Yeah, I was cool yeah. with all the black frats. Like, you know, okay. like I was cool with everybody, like okay. football players. So like 
I wasn't tripping. Like, you know, I was like, damn, like, that really happened yesterday? Yeah. Like, yeah. wow, that's just crazy. And, like, I would see, I would see it, you know, but, like, it would just hit me, like, you like, some, like you can't control it. Like, 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 you know? I'm curious, though, because, um, like, obviously going uh, to Wazoo um, and kind of, I can speak, like, for, for my experience. Yeah. There was very, there was definitely a, a, a separation between the student and like the student athlete, mm-hmm. right? Um, where like we'd be cool with y'all, but like they couldn't necessarily be in the mix as much as yeah. maybe they'd like to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk about that? Did you have to experience that sort of gap, like in a situation like that, if you wanted to jump in and like stand next to the dude or oh, yeah. be in solidarity? Would you? Were there things that may have held you back from being able to do that? Oh yeah, not for sure. Uh, so the football team did it. <laughs> They did it. They 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 did, they weren't gonna play. Uh, I think the the number came out that the school would have lost like two two million dollars if, if the if the uh, team refused to play. I think it was like BYU at like a, in a bowl game. They would have lost like yeah. upwards of two million dollars if they didn't play. So then, the president resigned. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's yeah. the crazy money thing. talks. <laughs> nah, that's that's that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's the wild thing about it. And then, and they told us they was like you know. You know, they didn't say don't do it, but, you know, they was like, you know. Yeah. Like, we know what the football teams do. It. Like, you guys don't, like, just don't get into that, you know. And you always feel like, and that was the beginning of it all. I feel like that like, was like, you know, obviously it's 2019 now, like yeah. Twitter and everything. So, like, we're, yeah. we're seeing it every day. Yeah. But, like, I feel like that was, what, 2014? Yeah. So, like, yeah. it was still, like, very fresh. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. like, yeah. Uh, uh, so guys didn't know what to do. Guys were, like, you know. I feel like some of my teammates wanted to do something, yeah. but like, then again, like it's also weird being an athlete because you're not from there. Mm. You know, like I'm from mm-hmm. Seattle, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, Missouri's crazy. Like, you yeah, know, oh, tripping out here. Like, yeah, I got, like yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to mind my P's and Q's. Yeah. You know, who, you know, yeah. But like, I, like I, I rock with y'all. But like, what, how does this do from Switzerland? Like, why, yeah. why? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you got athletes from. Compton and yeah, like in Missouri. Like I why? think, and I think I think that's I just asked that because I um I just noticed that there's a gap. Not to say like everybody should be jumping in because at the end of the day, yeah. like if if it's something that you think someone else is more suited to do, yeah. then let them do it. You mm-hmm. feel me? But I just noticed like I, I had a homie who played and he was just like talking about how there was a lot of restrictions on athletes. Oh yeah, and it was just like you know I feel like I feel like there should be a little bit more freedom. To yeah. just be a student. If you want them mm-hmm. to be a student athlete, let them be a student and be in the mix and do what other students do, you know? Yeah, but it's like they put – it's like that weird line with NCAA and, like, why they want to start paying them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, like – well, they don't want to start paying them. Why people feel like athletes should be get paid, yeah. which they should. Mm-hmm. It's because they, they usually like this so much. It's like what if they just put you on a, uh, a radio station or a mm-hmm. commercial mm-hmm. – and then this situation happens four days later, mm-hmm. and now you, you're standing in. Now it looks like yeah. the zoo's also with it, you know. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. It's like it's it's it's, it's the weirdest like line, yeah. you know, because because they, they're selling your likeness so much. That's crazy. You know. Yeah, that, that Fab Five documentary definitely. Uh, yeah, fact, a lot yeah, of that's crazy. That. Yeah, exactly. For real. Yeah. So, you had your time at Missouri and everything like that, and then because you did two years over there, right? Mm-hmm. And then you went to Drexel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So what was it like, like transferring and then being like, damn, I got to do this all over again, mm-hmm. like get used to a new place and everything like that? Uh, so basically, at Drexel, Drexel was a, <laughs> like, I love my college experience. Like, mm-hmm. it was like my first two years, it was like, it was humbling, right? It was like, I didn't, I wasn't playing, I was playing like, you know, 18, 19 minutes a game, whatever. Uh, wasn't con- contributing how I was supposed to contribute. Mm-hmm. But I was on that platform that I always dreamed about. You know, I was like, I'm playing against Kentucky, mm-hmm. playing against Florida, I'm playing against. Yeah. The top schools. Like elite the elite yeah. schools, yeah. you know, that I watched on TV my whole life, mm-hmm. right? I'm playing on ESPN, all the, everything. Uh, but I didn't get what I – but I didn't get that, like, you know, those strokes that I wanted. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, boom. So, what did I do instead? I made, like, a bunch of connections at Mizzou. Like, I made a bunch of friends. I go to Philly. It's almost like the exact opposite. I was like, I'm not, like – tripping on making a bunch of connections <laughs> like mm-hmm. i'm just in the lab like i was like so yeah. that, does that come with age though as you get older right i think I com- yeah I, de- I, de- I definitely think that comes with age yeah. for sure yeah uh I, I think it also comes with like uh you could feel like the, almost the end coming like it's like damn like i just threw away two years well i didn't throw away two yeah, years yeah. i mean it was just like it just felt like those two years like were for nothing yeah so like 
not only that, but like you could just hear whispers and like murmurs, like people like forgetting about you. You know, like mm-hmm. you you could like use uh not always uh I feel like negative energy isn't always like a negative thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's like people like just talking bad about you. People just yeah saying this and that, and you could I use that as like motivation Channel just to that. like you know mm-hmm. lock I lock myself in like that Philadelphia gym for hours on and you could ask anybody mm-hmm. at Drexel. Uh, you know, I was just always there, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't like make as many friends and everything. I don't have as many connections in Philly as I do, as I do in Missouri. But you know, shit, I averaged you know twenty two and eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like exactly. you, know, you go but crazy. To, but to do saying. that, you gotta sacrifice. You gotta. Yeah, facts. I think like a lot of people want, they want certain things in their lives, but they don't want to change. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, they re- they truly don't want to adjust their current lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dog, you cannot. <laughs> There's no way in hell you're gonna do something different but not change how you're living. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Um yeah. or elevate to that next level. So that's a that's a big message for sure. I also feel like there's no coincidences, like I mean maybe here and there, but I feel like there's no coincidences. Like back to what we was all talking about at the beginning with the quote. Mm-hmm. Can you read that quote again? Yeah, yeah. Success is a journey, not a destination. The doing is often more important than the outcome. Exactly. So what we did we something that stood out to me at Drexel that we did, we had the biggest Comeback in NCAA history, <laughs> like really? the biggest ever. We was down thirty four, thirty five points. We came back and won that John. <laughs> damn, god damn. Like, like that, that, like that who was. was it, who that, was this against? That was that. That record was there for I think forty five or fifty years by Duke and Drexel University in small town and not small town Philadelphia, but yeah. small school in Philadelphia yeah. has that record right now. And I feel like it was a culmination of everything we just talked about. It was yeah. just like, like. That moment, it was just like, wow, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like you know, yeah, no, that's real though. Like from my mom, my dad, my mentors, like my grand, like you know, I could go down the line, like, yeah, mm-hmm. like we all got a story, right? And mm-hmm. I feel like seeing my mom struggle, seeing my dad, you know, my my grandpa is from Pearl, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. He came up here when he was like 13, 14. Mm-hmm. And I know this is getting off topic, but it's it's still the same as uh, like. He's a self-made millionaire right now, and he can't even he can't he can barely read. Like, wow, he can barely read. He worked his whole life. He worked his whole life uh, doing construction. Opened up his own like uh, his own his own uh, stucco business, mm. uh, doing real estate and stuff like that. Mm. And he's you know what seventy five right now. Wow, sixty six. I don't know how how my grandpa is. Yeah. That's kind of bad. But <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but uh, yeah. like. He started from nothing, and he never stopped. Yeah. And now he has the he's in a position where he can sit back and relax now. Yo, that right? kind of, that, that's crazy because I think, first of all, you come from a family of hustlers. So it's exactly. like, I think that's why it's important for people now, currently, at the age where they don't have families yet, and they, if they plan on having families, to start laying down those, th- those demonstrations, bro. Mm-hmm. Because, like, those are the things, even if you don't truly get it done, that's why I always say the attempt is everything. Mm-hmm. If you attempt... And let's say you had heard about a great great grandfather, like yeah, your great grandfather had a business or he Fact. tried this. Like at, you, at that point, you don't know how successful it was because you can't go back in time. But Fact. just hearing the fact that he tried some shit Fact. is gonna make you think, okay, well it's possible, you know. Fact. So I don't, you got it so, in you. Fact. Yeah, Fact. exactly. So my so another thing, I feel like both of those are the same thing is like when I said uh, like I didn't have nobody, I didn't have any examples with basketball, but I had examples in other avenues, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my grandpa didn't have. I mean, his example was his dad. My mm. great grandpa got like to this day we got like seven hundred acres in Pearl, Mississippi. Mm. Oh, my damn. whole family lives on there. That's big. Damn, that's we, big. We got a uh, a freeway named after my great grandpa. That's big, man. In a, in, a, in a major city in Mississippi. Yeah, that's like, big, like, bro. Like, like, obviously, like, you know, there's no like no one's like there's no rev not that much revenue yeah. from that right now. Yeah. Obviously, because everyone's living there, yeah. you know, whatever. But my grandpa saw that. I was like, damn, like my my father, you know, has eight. He had, he had eighteen. My my grandpa's one of eighteen kids because they needed all those kids to work the land. But my my dad has all these kids, and he's still like he's like a, a rich, you know, black man yeah. in, in in the south. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like my grandpa felt like there's no excuses. My yeah. mom felt like there's no excuses. Yeah. My dad feels like there's no excuses. Yeah. So like that's how I've always grown up. It was like I gotta figure something out. Yeah. Like I'm I can't just you know sit on my hands. Like mm. I'm 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 gonna do something. <laughs> mm. That's you know? big, man. Yeah. And I think um, I think it does pay off, you know, because mm-hmm. um, 
obviously, so before obviously um, coming out and wanting to uh, pursue the NBA route, mm -hmm. um, you played at St. Louis University as well. Mm -hmm. Most recently, um, you guys played in the tournament, yep. right? And they're actually a program that's, I think they well, they went to the tournament like 10 years in a row now. Uh, like no, no, no. They they used to go to the tournament a lot. Okay, that yeah, was the first yeah. time we've been in the tournament in okay. seven years. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. At one point they went on a run though. Yeah. yeah. Larry Hughes, shout out Larry Hughes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So um now that must have felt good just playing on a high level again, mm -hmm. but also being able to kind of get uh the the not the attention, but more so just the energy, right? Mm -hmm. The positive energy. Because mm -hmm. I guess you said for a little bit of time, there was a lot of negative energy that was kind of coming your way, right? Yeah. Um, how did that feel, though? Man, it felt great. Uh, man, it was the first time I was on a winning team in, pff, since high school. <laughs> like two years at Mizzou, that year at Drexel, like mm -hmm. we wasn't winning. Mm -hmm. We wasn't winning a, 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 enough games to like really make noise. So I went to a program. And he told me this when I was on the phone with him re they, when they were recruiting me is, uh, like, we're going to make the tournament. Like, if you want to be a part of a, a winning culture, you need to come here. And, like, maybe you won't be scoring 20 points a game like you was just doing, you know. But, like, that's a sacrifice that you might have to make if you yeah. really want to, you know, play at the next level. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I actually was uh, – I was going to go to Xavier. I, t I wasn't going to do it. I was going to go to the school in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I'm in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. uh, called Xavier, and I talked around. I had those people in my corner. I talked to them, and they thought St. Louis is the best idea. So I ended up going there because the coach there <clears throat> played a, was point guard at Kentucky. Okay. He played, uh, you know, he played in a tournament. He played in the NBA. Mm. Travis Ford, he's, you know, he's, he's a legend in the basketball community. Mm -hmm. So they was like, not only is it an opportunity for basketball, but it's not what you know, it's who you know. There you go. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. if I – rub his back and get him to the NCAA tournament and get yeah. him, you know, yeah. help him. Maybe, you know, yeah. most likely he's going to, you know, do something for yeah. you, Not for uh, you know, in the future. So, uh, thank God we made it to the tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dope, though, to see yeah. you guys in the tournament, though, for real. Yeah. How, how was that experience like, was, when you got there? It was amazing. Uh, you know, this, the, the, the NCAA tournament is like, have you ever he heard anybody talk about it? They're not exaggerating. It's, it's, it's literally like nothing to, like, it's hard to put it in words it's because it's just like everything's just like glitz and gla glamour and just yeah. glitter and just like yeah. you're practicing in front of like media like yeah. I'm just doing jumpers and there's camera guys in my face taking yeah. pictures, <laughs> taking yeah. pictures. Yeah. so now I'm just like making faces like, <laughs> trying, trying to get trying, trying to get my gram right trying out. to get my gram right yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah it was like you know packed house and uh, we was talking off the air but it was supposed to be in Seattle that would have really been crazy we played in San Jose oh, okay and uh, the key arena was like getting construction yeah, or re renovated. renovated. Yeah. So they moved it to San Jose, but mm. like that would have that would have been, been a full circle moment right there. Oh yeah, I need a thousand <laughs> tickets. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. 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 Nah, man. That's but that's that's dope, man. I think um, it's a powerful message because uh, I, I think the the ath the route to the NBA um, there's more stories like yours than there is like the Zion Williams. You know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? Or the, the dudes who just like come straight out right mm -hmm. um and again it's like i think talent is one thing but the hard work and grind and also the the, the universe i believe in the universe in it and it flows in a way for everybody you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um you just kind of have to learn how to align with it which it sounds like what you were what you were doing was just aligning with it whether it was you know tough times good times with mm -hmm. regards to what it was you got to keep pushing right facts you know that's good man mm -hmm. so what was like so you guys get in the tournament and then how, what was it like after you left college? Like, how would you – you know, some people are like, oh, man, you probably you, you shouldn't go hoop or you should go start doing this now. How do you, like, block that out and be like, all right, I got to figure I gotta figure this out. I'm going to take this route. Uh, Man, after college, it's, uh, it's, it's totally different. Yeah. But uh, I was – I was expecting it because my my coach at St. Louis University was always tell, – like, will always tell me and my teammates, my teammates and I, that – uh. College is so much easier. It's easier and it's harder, but the way that it's easier is because you have so many people around you to guide you and help you. Like, mm. it's almost feel like it feels like you're being baby. Like, yeah. every college athlete feels sense. like they're being babysat. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. they're texting you, be there, texting you. Why? You know, like yeah. it's always like constant, restrictions. Like, don't do this. Constant something. Yeah. But that in itself is like easy. When like right, right when that college ball stopped. It was in time to like do pro workouts and stuff. Like, 
I wasn't hearing from nobody but my agent. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was wondering, like, my coach is not, co- like, yeah, like, you know, so it's I gotta, over. I got to recruit yeah. the next Yeah, they got to re-recruit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They, it's, it's over. Yeah. You know, it's time to, you got to get it out the mud. It's over. You got to go work out. You got to go schedule. You can't just be, you know, sitting around. You can't just be. Yeah. You got to do that yourself or have somebody like an agent or, you know, someone like that to, you know, put you in position to uh, succeed. But, like, it's over. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah. when it's over, you it's close over. close that chapter. Yeah, fact. You got yeah. to turn it up yeah. right, right after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's the, what's like, because, you know, we're all, I think everybody in here is a basketball fan. Uh, mm-hmm. But, like, what, what would you say is, like, the, bis- the biggest misconception uh, when it comes to this route of, like, entering the NBA, like, that people don't really know about, right? They think it's just workouts, making mm-hmm. sure your jumper's right, making sure you check off all the boxes. But there's probably some other things we don't see. What what, what do you think is the biggest misconception? Uh, one of them, I guess. One, I feel like one of the biggest misconce- misconceptions is that uh, it's almost like it's almost like that, that artist, right, that, that, uh, that drops a that drops a that drops a song, right? That they think is gonna be a hit, and it flops, and they drop a song that they just wanted to throw away, mm-hmm. and it's a hit. Mm-hmm. Like you never know, like who's watching. Mm-hmm. You never know, like when that time is gonna be yours. You know, like you could be, you know. It's not. It's not as simple as just like the numbers on the paper. Gotcha. It's. It's as. It's as. Uh, it's also like what scouts are in the building. <laughs> you, know, like, mm-hmm. you just had thirty, but wasn't no scouts there. Damn. You know, like yeah. you just. You just. You just. Uh, you know. You just did whatever, but yeah. with nobody there watching. Yeah. You know, you're not playing a national schedule or you're not uh, – whatever. You know, yeah. there's, there's so many it's different – timing. Yeah, it's timing. There's so many different things that uh, that can, you know, be the reason why you didn't make the NBA. And then there's also – I think I read a number. I forget the number, but there's only seven or 8,000 – like 8,000 people that have ever been in the NBA. All time? All Damn. time. There's only like wow. 8,000. Think about that. And the NBA's been around since, what, 48? 8,000. Yeah. Or whatever it was. It was yeah, a crazy yeah, number, crazy. right? But, yeah. There's only 60 people that get a chance every year, bro. <laughs> yeah. 60. So if yeah. you're 60 in or 60 out. Yeah. If you're not in the top 60, you better be, like, 60 to, like, 80, 85 so you can get a two-way contract. You can sneak yeah. in, you can sneak out, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, like, it's a small percentage, Yeah. you know? So a lot of dudes, you know, are going overseas. A lot of dudes are... And there's, it's a good living overseas. So, guys like me, it's like, that's what I'm juggling right now. It's mm. like, do I juggle, uh, you know, really, you know, believe? I'm, I not believe. It's not yeah. struggle believing. But, like, do I bet on myself, mm-hmm. right, and go to, you know, the, the, the G League and, and uh, you know, sign a contract and mm-hmm. have the opportunity to make NBA money mm-hmm. and, like, be on a roster mm-hmm. and, like, that's what a lot of guys are doing. Like, mm-hmm. Alonzo Trier, mm-hmm. he didn't get drafted, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, like, he finessed the whole game to where, like, he went undrafted. And then he got a contract for, like, a player that was, was drafted, like, top ten. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. So, so you could, you could yeah. like, you could, like, finesse your own situation. Yeah. But it's just, like, it just depends on, like, the timing. Yeah. It depends on the people in your corner. Yeah. And it depends on, like... Basically, what, what, like what you want yeah. at that time, because they're paying. I mean, guys are making. Psh, I can go on on and on about guys and Peyton Siva, yeah. one of the town graces, making a g- great living playing yeah. for Alba Berlin yeah. right now. Yeah. Like, and they're winning actually. They're, they're they winning. Been winning. He now. just got an extension. Wow, yeah. that's big. He's, living, he's making more money than some of these these league players because yeah. he's not getting taxed. They get he they getting you know forty five percent of that. You know, what's I mean fifty five percent. You know, it's interesting though because I think it's a different era now for athletes. Uh, and I wanted to bring this up, too, just the fact that the social media exists, right? So now mm-hmm. I think athletes have a lot more control over their likeness and mm-hmm. how they can market themselves, right? Yeah. I think the NFL struggles with that because they're wearing helmets all mm-hmm. the time, so you don't even know who's who. Mm-hmm. You see them in the streets. But NBA is different. And so someone like Peyton Siva, who's overseas, he's not on TNT. He's not on ESPN every night. Mm-hmm. But he does have an Instagram. Mm-hmm. And he's he's hooping. He's doing his thing. He's winning. So he can actually display and showcase his – or document his journey mm-hmm. and his demonstration – on his own, mm-hmm. you feel what I'm saying? Um, so I think that's important, man. I, do you do you do you look at social media as a as a tool? Oh, for or sure. Or do you just like because some people don't? I, I don't know why. I use it, I think of it as a tool, but I don't I don't use it as one. I feel like I need to start. I almost thought about just making a new Instagram and just like curating the whole thing. You know, just yeah. like it's it's like a powerful make, like, tool. Bro. Yeah, because like 
some guys benefit off of it. I just kind of joke with it, honestly. <laughs> I, I don't really be taking it too seriously. Like, yeah, you should, man. It's, I, it's, I know, it's a powerful I tool. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, man. <laughs> you got some IG models. What you do? Man. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. No. That's that guy right there. <laughs> uh, but nah, man. Um, it, but I think, again, I think you do represent uh, the, the, the unconventional route mm -hmm. that a lot of athletes are going through. Um, and I think there's, it's misleading sometimes in terms of this journey mm -hmm. that, that a lot of athletes are on, and I think you represent it very well. Um, now, what we also like to do is also give our guests a chance to kind of just talk about things that they got coming on the horizon, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, um, certain things that you're working on or obviously right now you, you focus on you in the lab, mm -hmm. right? But um, Or, you know, just, just things maybe you want to announce or, you know, Shout people out. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, right now, I'm just, you know, in constant talks with my agent trying to figure out what the best situation is. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we got, you know, situations overseas. We got a few uh, overseas. We got a few teams interested, uh, you know, in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, this G League camp or whatever mm -hmm. uh, in a few weeks that I might end up doing. Okay. Uh, I just got to. This random deal in China <laughs> to go to like some event for like two weeks, uh, like just two weeks, like an event just to hoop, like it's like a one on one situation. Oh, uh, I think I've seen it's those. Like, before. It's like, I've never seen it. Okay, but like my agent told me not to do it. <laughs> but it was great money though. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> he's like, no. I'm fresh out of college. I'm trying to get everything. Yeah, Where you want yeah. me to be? I'm pulling up. <laughs> but he told me not to do it. I mean, it, now that you're, you know, considered a professional, like. I mean, Everything. stuff just happens out of nowhere. Yeah, like, yeah. We, like my, my agent just gets calls and, yeah. you know, just pretty much tells me. You got to be ready. Yeah, you got to be ready. Exactly. Yeah. Like, shoot, with the Clippers, Summer League, like, I was just working out with uh, Zach, Zach Levine pretty much every day. Um, just trying to stay ready, stay ready, like, hoping I was going to get a call. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it was getting down to the wire. I didn't think I was going to get one. Mm -hmm. It wasn't looking good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we made some. We made an effort to see, like, you know, if there's a, if there's a, uh, a way if I could get, if I could get on there, mm -hmm. and uh, ended up happening. Wow. And I was just like, it was like, it was just like, it was just such a crazy moment. Yeah. It was like, yeah. damn, like. Yeah. I'm really about to be, on the stage that like, another one that I always dreamed yeah. of, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. I love that. I love that. I love your mindset of just appreciating like kind of the moment. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes people are just so. Consumer, what's ahead, bro? It's like, mm -hmm. yo, look, look at what's happening right now. Yeah, and people, people like, like even the people close to me, they just be like, like you're not excited, you know what I mean? Like you're yeah. not like, you know. And it's like, how do you feel? Like you're not. And it's just like I always like kind of keep like a steady, uh, what's this? Even like kill. not yeah, even kill, like even not kill. too high, not too low. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, as we've explained, like psh, I've had lows, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I've had highs. Mm -hmm. Shoot, like. We didn't even touch on that, but, like, literally, <laughs> I go to Lakeside, right, and we was a terrible team first three years. My junior year, we make it, make it to the state championship, right? Mm -hmm. And who are we playing? Rainier Beach. Wow. It's, like, out of a storybook, right? It's like, <laughs> we're playing, like, Lakeside is playing Rainier Beach in a state championship game. And guess who misses the game-winning free throw? <laughs> you know, Tremaine. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, I feel like I couldn't come, come back to, like, to my – to my neighborhood, That's like crazy. I just missed the game. What? <laughs> yeah. No, you didn't do that. You yeah. didn't do that. He was flaming me up on Twitter. You know, I've just had so many lows. I've had so many highs. So it's like, yeah, nothing really surprised me anymore. It's like, yeah. I wish I could go get that free throw back. <laughs> 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 I wish For I could real, go that. man. It's important, man. Yeah, fact. Uh, but those are, I mean, those are all blessings too. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the good and the bad. You got to appreciate always. it all. Um, yeah, man. Uh, now, I always ask this question as well for all mm -hmm. our guests, kind of just to kind of cap things off. It sums up all we kind of discuss as well as, like, it'll cast what's ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can, my brother, what's one word to describe what keeps you on the up and up? What keeps me on the up and up? And you can explain it as well. One word. <sighs> one word <laughs> is, uh, mm. can I get a couple seconds? Can I get, I mean, get take a, your time. Let me get time. You good, bro. You good? One word. Uh, I'll do, uh. Uh, 
Comfortability. Mm. Comfortability. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. I would do comfortability because I feel like you just got to be comfortable in your own skin. You got to be comfortable with your own situation. Mm. If you're steady looking at what he's doing, what he's doing, you're always going to be in a constant race to something. Like, nothing's ever going to, you know, yeah. be enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you're looking at, if I'm looking at LeBron James, LeBron James is looking at uh, Paul Allen. I mean, not Paul, rest in peace to go. But uh, LeBron James looking at, uh, you know, who? Bill Gates. Bill Gates mm-hmm. looking up at, uh, you know, Amazon, yeah, dude. I mean, Bill is Gates it? probably looking up at no. I mean, no, nah, he's looking about the dude. He's looking at Amazon. He's looking <laughs> Jeff, up, Bezos? Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is sitting good yeah, right that's now. That's true. That's true. But no, I'm just saying, like, you could. It, it's never gonna stop. You yeah. just gotta be comfortable. Yeah. You gotta just be like, just focus. Not just focus on yourself. Focus on your family. But just like, yeah. Not worried about because like, there's dudes with so much money that are more depressed than you. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, it's uh, not. It's not about. Even when she said earlier, when you're like, you just gotta be confident. Yeah. You gotta be confident in yourself, you mm-hmm. know, and that's where you get that like comfortability from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and um, we actually got a slogan within the squad. Um, it's kind of like a philosophy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, set your pace, don't react to the race. Facts. Right. It's like, like you said, you you gotta be the one dictating that. Mm-hmm. You gotta dictate your pace. If you want to speed it up, that's fine. If you want to slow it down, that's cool too. But mm-hmm. you just can't let people on outside of that dictate your pace. You know. Facts. That's real. Um, comfortability. I like it. That's the first time we got that word, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, but, yeah, man, Tremaine, we definitely want to just appreciate you for coming to the show, first and foremost, man. Um, just sharing your story, right? Mm-hmm. Sharing your experience, your demonstration. Um, I think it's I think it's amazing what you're doing yeah. and what you're most likely going to continue doing as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you got anything else, Erm? Uh, no, not really. But like I said, I, res- I respect the route, though. <laughs> yeah. I respect the route that you're taking because you're not stopping. So, you know. Yeah. Appreciate that. Very much. Yeah, yeah, man. The marathon continues, man. That's fact. Uh, yes, sir. But yeah, man. With that said, I think it's safe to say Tremaine Isabel Jr. is officially a member of the Up and Up. Can we get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.